It's another exciting edition of Space and Style, your doorway into the world of real estate, architecture, and interior design trends, and much more. My name is Olavide Unifadi, and today we are going to be concluding our discussion on building and designing an efficient kitchen from last week. And later on on the show, we are going to go to the interior design tip, where an interior decorator will be taking us on how to avoid following trends blindly. So to start today's show, let's check out what we have on the property of the week. This week, we're in another property that will wow you. And as usual, I have Victoria with me. I'll be taking us through. Hello. Hello, Victoria. Hi. So can you tell us about this property? Okay. I'll, I'll call this an edifice, actually. Indeed this is, is a five-bedroom, fully detached duplex with a swimming pool. And you know what? This is one of its kind in this environment. You know the striking thing about this property is the price. Quite affordable. Right here is the kitchen. This is the bathroom. Welcome back to the show. And as I stated earlier, we are going to be talking about how to build and design a well thought out kitchen that combines elegance, aesthetics, and functionality. And to continue the discussion with me is our Mirabu Joylin Agbamuche, who joined us last week. She is the creative director of Home Affairs Design with over 10 years' experience in the world of interior design with particular buyers for kitchen designs. So, thank you, Joy, for coming again. Thank you for having <laughs> me again. <laughs> okay, so I really enjoyed the one, um, the discussion we had last week. So, from last week, we talked about um, designs, layouts, yeah. and all that. Trends. So, moving on. Yeah, trains and mm -hmm. all that. So, moving on, I would like to ask, what, um, what are the must-haves in a modern kitchen? Okay, good. And without sacrificing functionality. Okay, so let's start with the let's start with the must haves in a modern kitchen. First of all, it has to be seamless. And um, what makes the modern kitchen seamless is enough um, storage, smart storage, inbuilt storage, okay? Inbuilt storage. So, um, one of the must have is a smart storage in uh, smart inbuilt storage. And we're talking here about here we're talking about the the inbuilt or pull out plate rack, uh, pull out spice rack. We are talking about um, cutlery organizers, um, hidden pantries or inbuilt uh, pantries. Um, another must have is the faucet. We talked about it last time. Not just any faucet, but the statement piece for um, faucet. Uh, it, it must have um, it's. A modern kitchen now does not use um, handles anymore and knobs, so they are usually uh, handless. It's just soft touch and then it opens. Another okay, so the hardware is gone. Yeah, the handles the pull out and all they are gone for modern kitchens. Okay, so when you tap on it, is it that it's electronically made or what, what's the technology behind just tapping a cabinet and it pulls out? There's a special hinge. 
that does that. Um, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's, not a, it's not an electrical thing. It's a, the type of hinge that you touch and it just, it just it's opens. Sensor. No, you just you tap it and then it pushes out by oh, itself. Okay. Uh, okay. I it's the type of hinge or the runner of the drawer that you use that can help. Okay, do that, that just responds to yeah, tapping. Yeah, it okay. responds and then it just pushes itself out and then you tap it again and, it, and then it just flows in. Okay. But well, but how sustainable is that? It's strong. It's actually uh, stronger than the the normal. The other local one doesn't even last most times. So. It's very sustainable okay. because they are high quality uh, materials and products. So what about flooring? What about lighting? We talked about it last week, but yes. so why I'm asking this question okay. again is how to um, infuse it into a modern kitchen. So a modern kitchen now must have those three types of lighting, the task lighting, the um, accent lighting, that's the pendant on the, or the chandelier, and it must have the ambience lighting. So. That's one thing it should have. And then it should have also, the, the cabinet should be lighted up as well. Uh, that's part of the task lighting, so that when you open up your, uh, whatever, your doors, cabinet doors, you should be able to see what you're what looking for. What about the for. sink? We've not even touched on anything sink at all. Yeah, so the modern kitchen now has this um, two uh, large bowls sink so you know b previously things come with trays and they are not so deep but this yeah. the modern kitchens have these deep double bowls without trays so uh, that's one thing that a modern kitchen okay has. so the modern kitchen expects you to have a hidden rack for your storage for your plates yes. and all that so it doesn't come with a tray anymore is that why it doesn't come with a tray? The, you mean the sink? Yes, you know, on that part, that's where okay. we put the drainer oh. and all that. Yeah. Yes, 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 that's true. That, yeah, it's because um, we're not expected to. It's a modern kitchen is seamless and it's, it's, it has this minimalist look. So you come into your kitchen, it's clutter free. So there, and anything that brings clutter is out of it. So that's why. What about mm. glass burners? What kind of glass burner? Well, for um, what is in, in trending now, or what is even more functional, is having a cooktop, you know, the burners without the oven. Okay. Because it's seamless too. You can incorporate it on, into, the, um, into the countertop. All right, unlike the other one that has the full, the one that has a gas burner and the, and the oven, oven, you know, it breaks the, 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 the flow of the countertop because you have to cut it and then push that one in. But for a modern kitchen, what works really well is a, is a cooktop without the um, oven. So the oven is installed separately usually it goes with a microwave and some modern kitchens now we have double ovens instead of one oven so um, mm. another very important feature of a modern kitchen is that everything is inbuilt the fridge is inbuilt the microwave is inbuilt the it must also have an inbuilt um, uh, waste bin so you, you don't yeah. walk into your kitchen and then your waste your bin. bin is just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so modern kitchens, everything is hidden. You don't even see the waste bin. It it's, it's also um, uh, comes with its own um, mechanism. So you put it, it's, it we, sometimes we install it under the, on, under the sink because it must be close to where uh, you do it your cleanup. Yeah, yeah, where you generate the waste. So it's usually under the sink if... Um, if your sink is not too deep, if the height is enough for it to go in, or just beside the sink. So those are the very key features. Okay, so another thing I, we've not talked about is the rule of an island. It must mm. still be incorporated in every kitchen. What does it do? What, does it, what purpose does it serve? Okay, so the island, is, it's not compulsory. It depends on the size of your kitchen. Okay, so because um, if, when I meet clients and they tell me, they want, well, I want an island, we have to check, I have to look at your, the size of your kitchen. If after having an island and we have up to like four okay, feet so sorry space. Sorry to button. Yeah. Some people might not understand what you mean, what we mean by an island. What's an island? Can you just describe quickly? An island is, 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 is the cabinet that is, um, that is positioned at the center of the kitchen. Okay, that All has right. chairs yeah. around it. 
it, uh, sometimes it has shape, sometimes it doesn't. But the island is just that uh, square cabinet or rectangular cabinet that is at the center of the kitchen. That's why it's called an island. Okay? It's standing on its own. It's standing oh, okay. on its own. Now I guess where it starts yes. from. Yes, yes. Okay. So if to so have an island, you should have a space for the island because to so make your kitchen functional, you must have enough space for traffic as a movement in the kitchen. So if you put your island and then you have up to th uh, four feet, between the island and the wall cabinets, then you're good to go. But if you put your island and you can't even open your cabinet doors, or maybe when you open your cabinet doors, um, another person cannot pass behind you, then there's a problem. Then you, your kitchen doesn't need an island. It's not big enough for an island. It's not big enough, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so then I've always um, read upon this fact that your refrigerator, mm -hmm. your gas burner, and your sink has to form a triangular shape. What's that and why, why do we, why, why is that? Okay, so I was coming to that because you, you asked oh, me about okay. functionality. Okay, so how to, about that. No, it's fine. How yeah. to uh, a modern kitchen, how to design a modern kitchen, mm -hmm. um, a functional modern kitchen. Yes, every kitchen, whether it's modern or not, should have, uh, we call it a work triangle. So the work triangle is made up of your, your stove, your fridge and then your sink so if you if you like um, connect them you, it will form a triangle so um so for your kitchen to be functional there should be um, minimum space and maximum spaces between these triangles okay so they shouldn't be too far away from each other so that <laughs> you know, uh, if it's too far away from each other then it's going to involve you walking so much taking so much energy and so much time. For example, if your fridge is very far away from your sink, I mean, you're going to do um, take a, a lot of time and energy walking back and forth your fridge and sink. Because if you, if you think of how we use a kitchen, you come in, you open your fridge, you bring out your veggies, and then the next place you move it to is your sink. All right, so the sink and the fridge and the gas cooker should be not too close and not too far. So for the for the stove now, the cooker, you should have up to, if it's a small kitchen, two feet on both sides of the of the stove or your gas cooker, so that when you lift your pot or your plate, you have a place to put it down. Also, your fridge should have a landing space. I see most kitchens, no, the fridge is there, it's beautiful, but no landing space. So you pick up your veggies from the from the fridge and you turn around, there is no landing space beside it, there is no landing space in front of it, and that that is not a functional kitchen. A functional kitchen should have landing spaces around these work zones. So, for instance, if your fridge is maybe surrounded by tall cabinets because it's an inbuilt fridge, then you should think of, before you, you install tall cabinets around your kitchen, around your your, your, your fridge and take away the landing space, then you must make provision of an island so that as soon as you pick up something from the fridge, you have a sweat to okay, land. Um, okay, I will have to cut you at this point, but we'll be back shortly. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, and you're still watching Space and Style, and I still have Joylin Agbamuchi with me. Um, before we went on the break, we were talking about the must have appliances, lighting, flooring, and all that. Mm. However, this is all contingent upon <laughs> what money you budgeting. Yeah. So, some people have a very big budget, some people have limited budget. So, in all of this, where should you start from? What should take the priority in your budget list? <laughs> well, like everything in the kitchen. Okay, most things are very key. Like, you can't you even no matter how much you have, you, you must have a countertop, you must have your cabinet, you must have your appliances. So, in, um, and then if you're renovating the kitchen, you should first of all budget for the structural changes that you want to make. Okay, like if you want to expand your kitchen and maybe add an adjoining space to it, you should um, budget for that, budget for the plumbing, the electricals, the, okay, to fix yeah, it. the tiling, the flooring, very key because you can't have the kitchen without all of those ones. Then you must budget for your cabinet. Mm. 
Now, the, the type of cabinet you use will de depend on your money, on your budget. So we have the you know, high grade um, boards, then we have the cheaper ones. So it depends, but in all, it costs a lot too. But what takes um, most, most, um, most of the budget sometimes is the appliances that you want to use, especially if you want to go for the high range appliances. They so really have to maybe put down like maybe 40%. You can budget. take up to 40, 40 to 50 percent of the budget. So, but if you're you, you are not so big on your budget, you can go for maybe the mid range because the mid range actually work as good as the high range. It's just that the the brand name. Sometimes we pay for brand names, <laughs> you know. And then you must budget for countertop. Very okay, important. I was, my next question was going to take okay. me to countertops because. I see, um, I don't know the difference, to be very honest with you. Mm. I see marble, quads, okay. just different ones. And when I go into any kitchen, I just see a countertop. I don't know the difference. I don't know why they are different. Okay. So can you please explain that? Okay, so we have different types. We have, we have man-made countertops. We have, um, we have natural stones. And then, uh, depending on style and budget as well, because they cost differently, they give you different look and feel. For example, granite, it's a countertop that is it's natural. It's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a natural stone. But then, it has, it's a very busy uh, countertop. And so, it, it, if you are going for like a contemporary, seamless look, granite will not work because it has this very busy look. Uh, which is a more important... Um most expensive, rather. It's marble that is more So expensive. why would people use marble if they can use quartz that has all this, all these qualities and it's not as expensive as marble? Okay, why people use marble? Yes, if quartz has all this element yeah. that so marble doesn't have. People, people use marble because some are just, uh, maybe they, are, they, they love um, natural materials oh, in their okay. kitchen. Marble is a natural material, so okay. that's why some people go for it. Then it also gives you this very, it just, it's exp when you see marble, you know it's expensive. And some people want to, you know, they just want to see, they want to be looking at their money, so. Mm. Okay, so for the cabinet, what would you have um, advise? Glossy or matte? Mm, um, you know, uh, it's glossy all, all, all the way. I love it. It used to that because I'm into modern kitchens. It's that glossy uh, finish that gives it that, that modern look, that sleek, but elegant. Was, well, you, I remember you saying last week that it's when it comes to revamping your old kitchen, mm -hmm. it wouldn't suffice. Gloss would because you can't take out the the surface yeah. part of it so yeah. that's the disadvantage that's a disadvantage but then it's very long it's durable it lasts for a very long time that glossiness doesn't fade you know as long as you keep maintaining it well it's just so it lasts so, it's, so finally i was going to ask about closed plan kitchen and um, open plan because okay. of course i know it's a new um something new in nigeria yeah. We are used to close the um, plant kitchens. But these days I walk into homes and I see open plan. Do you think it's advisable? <laughs> and what are the intricacies? Can you just go uh, the well, differences and all of that? For, you know, the way I will uh, advise people to do open plan here, you have to check your, your, your lifestyle and what you cook, the way you cook. So from, you know, there's this, um, this spice we use in my in the in, the, uh, in Delta C, if you use it to cook soup, it really smells very badly because it's called ogiri. <laughs> so, for example, oh, we also have it in. Uh -huh. So you have this yeah. open plan, and you have guests in your living room, and then you're cooking with this uh, native. I mean, it's not for I don't. It is not really suited for us, except as I said, maybe your lifestyle, maybe. You eat out, you only do microwave food, you don't pound, uh, do pounded yam, you don't do all of those are really native, native, uh, um, I mean, local Nigerian dishes. If you don't do all of that, then open plan will work for you. But if you are into a local dish, you make those soup. Well, you open plan you know, is they... so beautiful. <laughs> it adds to the glamour and elegance of yeah. any living room. But it's not really workable for us. It's not so practical for us. Except mm. you can do open plan to your dining. 
but not I don't advise to the entire living room except if you don't cook that much. So you can you can actually combine your kitchen and your dining instead of having them as separate rooms. So that, mm. that can be that kind of open plan can really work for us. And then you have a door to that place. So when you're cooking the living room is you know safe from the smells of Ugiri and <laughs> Okay, that's fine. So, um, I was just going to ask, this just came to my mind. How has inflation affected your business? Well, uh, I think it's um, the price of things just they go up every single, every single week. So, this is when we do a quotation, we give like, um, we put... As, hey, subject to... Yeah, subject to like, this, uh, this quotation expires in three days. Wow. Because you can go back and then it's just it's, it's crazy. So you can't if you it, it, if you want to buy something, you just buy it like right now. Don't even like, procrastinate because the more you wait, the higher it goes. So that's why it's done to our businesses. So you have to we have to keep redoing quotes because you know sometimes the client is not ready right now, and then if he comes back maybe in a, in a few weeks. We have to go redo the quote again to make sure that the prices are still the same thing. On appliance yields or just wood or everything? We check everything because... So you have to do your quotes every, almost every two weeks? Yeah, we, yes. We have to just call and check. How much is this now? Is it still this price? And then they tell you yes or no. Well, this is absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Because... No, it's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where we are right now. You know, that's why we, unlike before when, you know, so you can do a quote and someone comes back in six months or eight months and you just, okay, just um, pay in and let's start. But you can't do it now. So has it impacted the, your volume of business? Well, because kitchen, it's a must have at home, right? It's a must have. So you see, whether there is um, inflation or whatever, you must... Yes, you must, you must do it. It's kitchen. the center of the home. <laughs> yeah, it's the so focus you, of the home. So, yeah, yeah um, so it hasn't affected it in that area because maybe budget will change. Maybe, we, you know, we can do maybe a lower range of appliances, you know, like that. So, wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Joylin Agbamuchi. It's been an interesting session. You know, you highlighted a lot of points that I never even knew existed in the kitchen. It's such an eye opener. And I hope you come back again. Definitely. Because there are so many things to talk about in the kitchen. Yeah. Wow. We have come to the end of our discussion on building and designing efficient kitchens with Joylin Agbamuchi. And I hope you'll be infusing all you have learned into revamping or building a new kitchen. So moving on, let's hear what we have on the design tip of the week. Welcome to the interior design segment where we talk about spaces, and decor and how to transform the lovely spaces. And um, with me today is the delectable and beautiful Edna. Thank you, Edna, for coming Hi. again. Thank you so <laughs> much. Okay, I love today's topic. It's talking about home decor trend 2021. I very much love this topic because I love trends. And there are a lot of things that are trending this 2021. Even due to the COVID, a lot has changed. A, yes, a lot of a lot of things have changed. Like for instance, the number one trend on my list is home office. After the COVID, people start to start realizing that you need to have an office in your home. So those are the new trends. Even gyms, having a gym in your apartment, it's a new trend. Then flowers, I have one here. I was going to say that. Yeah, like it's a new trend. It has been there before. But these days, a lot of people want to infuse um, flowers, plants into their space, their offices, their homes, their store. It is, I feel like it is here to stay, and we are loving the vibes it gives. Okay, so my, my question is, um, which is better, okay. the live ones or the artificial ones? Because okay, I see a lot okay. Of artificial ones. There have been a lot of arguments when it comes to artificial and live plants. For some interior designers, you feel like, life plans is the best but maintaining life plans is not easy 
I can tell you for a fact. Maintaining life plans is so not easy and you, you're not sure when they are going to leave. They can die at any time if you're not taking care of them properly. So for me, I always advise artificial plants because they can last you for a very long time and it is economical. But when it comes to plants, plants has a lot of benefits. When it comes to your health, your living, living, I'm talking about living plants. Living plants just tend to make you rest better. You breathe better in your space. Oxygen. The oxygen. It's also very, um, it has this healing effect when it's in your space. So about all that, you don't get to feel it in artificial plants. But for aesthetics, I'm going to choose artificial plants because <laughs> they are economical. They're not going to die tomorrow. So another thing that we have in our trend is pampas grass. They are dried grass, um, they are new trends, they were not there like that before and people are loving them, we are loving them, we've used it in a lot of space and it's a wonderful thing to have them in your space. And then dark colours, dark colours are also very trendy, when used properly, so you cannot just throw in dark colours if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so I was going to add to what you were talking about, um, mm. about smart uh, homes, oh, okay. security is also mm. very important. And it's done a lot when yes. it comes to security. Mm. Yeah, so what about accessories? What are the accessories that have come to stay? Okay, accessories that have come to stay. We have diffusers. Yes, mm. I've been seeing a lot of Yeah, them yeah, your house needs to smell fresh. So other than it's, it has to smell fresh, for aesthetics, diffuser is your go-to things when it comes to accessories. We also have like books, even though we're not reading them, they're like artificial <laughs> books. Yeah. But for the aesthetics part of it, they are really very nice when you have them. I also mentioned pampas grass. I also, you also need vetses for all these grasses and plants. So these are new trends that are yet, I feel like they are yet to stay because they are very lovely and, it's very, and they are very affordable too. Even flowers. Not plants, plants is from flowers. Think about flowers, especially in some stores these days. You have lots of flowers, you, the rose, the you name it. There are lots of flowers that are very trendy. I, for one, thought that they were going to leave 2020, but they are here and they are going nowhere. So those are the trends that I have. Mm. And that thing that is trending is the blush pink. You know, we spoke about blush pink in that segment. It's really welcoming color, people are embracing it. It has nothing to do with um, being a male or a female. Mm. Even, yes, like anybody can use blush pink. It's kind of like nude, but you need to know the difference. Like it's really a very trendy color and it is really very yummy and cute. <laughs> yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank you uh, too. For Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Space and style. And this is where we end it today. And many thanks for watching. And remember to make it a date with me next week, same time and on the same station. And until I see you again next week, I am Olamide Univari on Space and Style.